and welcome to the first part of the unit Balance of Plant, where we will discuss about the different sensors necessary to the appropriate operation of a pin fuel cell plant. In pin fuel cells, the electrochemical conversion in the stack is fundamental for the generation of electrical energy. However, for this conversion to take place, it is necessary to add a series of systems that guarantee the good operation of the stack. The set of all these subsystems is what is known as the balance of plant. In this unit, we will describe each of the elements that make it up and the selection criteria. The reaction gases, air and hydrogen, must be supplied in the right proportion to enable the fuel cell to generate the voltage, overcoming any pressure drops that may occur along the stack. In the case of hydrogen, it will normally be supplied in pressure cylinders. Therefore, in principle, it will only be necessary to have a regulator that limits the pressure to a value sufficient to overcome the pressure drop in the stack. It is not desirable to supply hydrogen at, at a much higher pressure than air as the diaphragm can then suffer. It will therefore be necessary to measure the hydrogen pressure in order to open the relief valve in the event of overpressure. In the fuel cell front end, this valve allows the evacuation of a part of, of hydrogen. This hydrogen will carry away the impurities which accumulate at the end of the stack as a result of the difference in pressure between the air inlet and the hydrogen. The time at which the valve must be opened is determined by the voltage generated by the last cell, which is measured by a specific voltage sensor. On the other hand, if the stack is not from end, the unreacted hydrogen is recirculated at the inlet through, through a hydrogen compressor. This happens due to the utilization factor other than one. In turn, the air must be supplied with the appropriate stoichiometric coefficient, usually two or higher. A compressor is used to provide the necessary flow and pressure to overcome the pressure drops in the stack. Depending on the size, the size of the stack, this can be a few bars. In order to know precisely what the actual airflow rate is, it must be measured with a mass, mass airflow meter. This information allows to act on the compressor motor through a continuous converter. The air inlet must have at least one particle filter. In addition, the humidity of the membrane in this type of fuel cell is very important. Therefore, the incoming air passes through a humidity exchanger from the outgoing air which is heated and charred with the water produced inside the stack. The temperature of the air leaving the stack is a reflection of the temperature of the membrane. The temperature must be kept below 90 degrees Celsius because at 100 degrees Celsius the membrane can be damaged. Measuring this temperature allows the control system to decide whether to activate the cooling system or not. Finally, it is necessary to measure the voltage generated by the entire stack and the current demanded by the load. The current measurement allows to determine which is the reaction airflow that must be introduced in the stack. On the other hand, the voltage allows to know when the region of the characteristic has been reached in which the concentration losses begin to be important. At that time, the control system must either alert the situation or directly disconnect the load by deactivating the protection relay in order to preserve the membrane in good condition. The information provided by the sensors must be processed by a digi digital system, such as a microcontroller or a PLC, which constitutes the control system that activates each of the actuators described. Different sensors can be used in order to measure the temperature of the air leaving the fuel cell. The table shows the temperature range that resistant thermometers, semiconductor integrated circuits and thermocouples can measure. All three will allow the measurement of the operating temperature of the pin fuel cell. The decision on which one to use will depend on the accuracy of the measurement to be obtained and the space available to house the sensor. 
Semiconductor based sensors are the most economical and easiest to read. They provide either a voltage or a current proportional to the measured temperature. However, they are available in relatively large packages and the measurement error is of 1 degree. Resistant thermometers, such as the resistant temperature detectors, have the property of changing the resistance as a function of the, of the temperature. They are very linear, especially those made of copper and platinum, and they are the most accurate of the three. They can be very small, so they can be used almost anywhere. However, the temperature measurement circuit must be a with stone bridge in which the resistance is in a branch which forces voltage condi conditioning through instrumentation amplifiers. In addition, they are the most expensive of the three sensors due to the materials used in their construction. Finally, thermocouples are two conductors of different metals joined at one end. The Seebeck effect describes a variation in voltage between the two conductors when the temperature of the joint varies with respect to the other end. The thermocouple may be encapsulated and attached to the metal capsule that encapsulates it or it may be exposed. In this case, the size can be so small that it can be introduced in the stack itself to measure the internal temperature as we can see in the pictures. The problem of the union of the metals that form the thermocouple with cop copper or another metal that is in contact with is that there is a variation of the voltage due to the contact of two metals at temperature at which the contact is found. The temperature of the contact is different from that at which the end of the thermocouple is found. This effect can be explained with the law of intermediate temperatures. For this reason, it is necessary to compensate for the variation in voltage that is proportional to temperature at which the contact is made. The compensation can be done by hardware or by software compensation. In any case, the temperature of the connector must be measured. This slightly complicates the measurement circuit. The AD594 integrated circuit performs the hardware compensation of the voltage provided by certain types of thermocouple thanks to an integrated semiconductor based temperature sensor. It provides its output with a voltage of 10 mW per degree Celsius. With, re with regard to pressure sensor, most of, most of them are based on the effect that the different impressor on a diaphragm has on its deformation. This different pressure can be caused by the pressure measure in relation to the vacuum. In that case, we will be measuring absolute pressure, so the atmospheric pressure will be approximately 1 bar. If the pressure difference is, measure, is the measured pressure with respect to the atmospheric pressure, then we are in the case of gauge pressure sensor. In this case, the atmospheric pressure is 0 and the vacuum pressure is minus 1 bar. Finally, using the operating principle, a differential pressure can be measured, which could be an indirect measurement of flow, for example. Membrane deformation can be measured using a strain gauge, such as the one shown in the figure, in which a variation in gauge resistance occurs when a variation in shape occurs. If the gauge is compressed, then the resistance decreases. Commercially, if the gauge is extended, the resistance increases. In order to make the pressure measurement response more linear, four equal gauges are usually arranged two on each side of the membrane, bright as shown in the figure. It can be shown that the voltage obtained at the output of the bridge with this configuration is directly proportional to the variation in resistance of the gauge. The picture shows a hydrogen pressure sensor, X grade for explosive environment, which provides a current of 4 to 20 milliamps at the limits of the measuring range from 0.1 to 1000 bar. 
In the next part, we will continue with the explanation of the sensor of the balance of plant.